Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to toggle the close button. This little guy up here in the upper right hand corner, right? Close, max, min, whatever you want to, you know, this whole thing. I'm going to show you how to toggle that on or off using VBA at runtime. It's easy to change at design time, right? It's a property for it. But how do you change that at runtime? All right, today's question comes from me. <laughs> because I actually wanted to do this in my own database. And the reason why is because I got a form that opens up when I do my customer service. And I'm not gonna show it to you guys. I got, it's, it's messy. I'm like the auto mechanic who drives an old car, right? Runs great under the hood, but it's not great to look at. <laughs> but it's something like this. Let's say you get your customer list here, right? Okay, now my customer list, hang on, there it is. Okay, I, I put a delay in there intentionally and I'll show it to you in just a second. Right. But when I move from record to record doing customer service, it pops up the customer form next to it. So as I'm looking at your emails, I can see your customer form. Right. And if I move to a different record. All right. And I and I, I put some some delay timers in here to simulate what happens and I got it to work. And I'll show you what I did in just a minute. The problem is, let me turn these delay timers off. Hang on. All right. I didn't turn the delay timer off, but I turned off the toggling of the close boxes. So watch this as I go to another record. What happens is in the background, it goes out to the table and it gets your information. It does some lookups to see if you have any other messages. It displays this. So there's like a, a good second or two of stuff that happens when I move from record to record over here before this guy loads. OK, now what happens is sometimes if I'm impatient, if I click on this and then close this before everything finishes running, see that? There was an action that happened in here that messed everything up. Okay, so what I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if I just turned this off while that background stuff is running, right? There's a query that runs, there's a lookup, there's some other stuff here and there, just so I can't accidentally do that. And so that's what I spent a few hours today figuring out how to do. And now that I got the code in there, I put it back in just now. If I move to a different record, notice it disables those until the, the record, this record finishes load. If I click on Jordy, I can't close this until Jordy loads and this stuff is finished loading. See that? This technique, this stuff is also good if you have a situation uh, like in my original prevent close video. Okay, in this video, prevent close, what I taught you how to do was shut off the control box and the close button and the maximum buttons and give you and create your own save and close button. Right. So you can control when this thing is visible. You can control, you know, if the users enter the right amount of data in here. All right. Allow them or don't allow them to close. Either way, you can also intercept the control F4 so they can't do that. Right. But I thought to myself, yeah, I could do this, but there's got to be a way to turn those buttons off temporarily, at least. And so that led me into a while of Googling and asking GPT and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And I learned a few things about how. Uh, how access processes this stuff. So first of all, let me show you. Let me, let me walk you through some of the things I did. So let's take this form because this form has nothing in it right now. Okay, you can easily come in here and you can turn off the control box and the close button, but that's at design time. You gotta go in design mode to do that. Now, these are both properties. You'd think you can just modify these at runtime, right? Control box and close button. Let's see what happens. Let me drop a button right here. Do I have a button on here I can copy? No, let's go grab one. Form design, grab a button. I'll just put it up here. All right, cancel the wizard, and we'll just put a couple X's in there. All right, so this button, let's bring this over here. Turn this off. We don't need that. All right, so in here, let's try turning off the close button. Me.close button equals false. Save it. All right, let's see what happens. This is the first thing I tried. All right, ready? Meh. To set this property, open the form or report in design view. Why it's even an option in here, I don't know, VB team or, or access team. Why, why even have that? I mean, I guess so you could get the property, but you can't set it here. Okay, so the next thing I tried was me.control box. That's the control box property. Okay, now let's try that. Let me close it and reopen it and hit the button. All right, nothing appears to happen and you can set it 
but it doesn't take effect until the window, until the form is closed and reopened, but it re reads it from the controls. The only way you can get this to work properly is if you save it in like a temp var or something, close the form, and then reopen it. I tried that with this form. Come here. But there's a, there's a whole lot of work involved. I got it to work. See? I'm, to I'm toggling it on and off. But it's got to close the form, save all the settings and variables that you want to save, and then reload the form, which is a bit of a pain. Here, let me show you what I did. All right, here's a public sub I created called Control Box. Actually, let me show you the code in the main menu and in this thing first here. So when this guy loads, all right, the onload event is the only place you can change this. Right here, me.controlbox. Because onload happens before the form is actually drawn on the screen. Okay, so we're using temp vars because this has to survive the form closing and reopening again. So this line just says, all right, if the temp bars, if it's null, if it hasn't been initialized yet, set it to true, the default. Okay, and then say me.controlbox equals whatever that value is. Do events is necessary here so this stuff processes before form load exits and draws the form. Okay, now my button that I put on there called toggle control box, that's just a simple toggle. What that does is it runs this guy. It's gotta be in a global module because it has to be outside that form. I declared a bunch of variables up here because I, you can save some properties. And I, I turned a lot of this off just for demonstration purposes. But right here, this is where we flip the variable. So it's going to come in here either true or false, right? Because the, the form's already loaded. So it's either true or false. We're going to not it. So that's going to make it false if it's true, true if it's false. Save whatever properties you want to save. Like I just saved the record source, but you can save the filter, filter on, order by, what ID number you're on, all that stuff. I'm just... I'm keeping it simple, okay? And then right here, we have to close the form and then reopen it again and then restore whatever properties you want. You wanna restore the filter, the order by that was on, you wanna jump back to the record, you can use record set clone, okay? And this works kinda sometimes. Um, I ran into a few instances where it didn't. It gave me bookmark issues and all kinds of stuff, but it, it, it's not bad, it's just, you know, and it flickers too. Okay, so then I decided, you know, let me, let, me, let me break down and ask GPT what it thinks. So it told me you could actually use a Windows API call to turn those bu buttons off on any form. Okay, all right. So here it is. I'm going to share this with you guys for free. It's right here. I'm going to put this in the code vault so you can go and click on it if you want to and grab it. Now, a Windows API call, what does that mean? Well, these are functions, get window long pointer, set window long pointer. All right, these are in Windows. So any application that uses VBA can use this. You can do this in Excel, you can do it in Word, you can do it in PowerPoint, right? And this disable close button is gonna take two parameters, the form and whether you wanna enable or disable those buttons. Okay, and then it uses these Windows API calls and these constants. You don't need to know all this stuff, what it means, you just use it, right? And if it's disabled, it does this. If it's enabled, it does that. And that's what I used in this guy to turn off. I know there's a delay in there to turn off these things, right? And back. See, let me show you what I got in here. Design view. All right. So I've got in my on current event, I'm simulating stuff happen. So first I'm, the first thing you do is disable the close buttons. Okay. Then I do events just to make sure. I just got sleep calls in here, just making it wait. This is simulating stuff happening in the background, right? Going out to the server and grabbing a bunch of records, okay? Then it opens up the customer form, and then it simulates some other stuff happening, and then it, it just does a simple check for that. That's okay. And then it turns the close buttons back on, right? And if you get rid of the sleeps, you'll see what it actually does faster here. Let me get rid of the sleeps. And again, this is good if you got a, a really slow network. <laughs> Mine's not slow, but it does a lot of calculations. And I'm constantly accidentally closing this form while this form's still doing something, see? You can see them flashing on and off there, right? But if you wanted to now, you could use, here, I'll put the toggle button in this one. So copy, paste. I'll just make two buttons in here. 
this will be on and this one will be off. Turn those control boxes on and off. This is a better solution, right? This is disable close button. So right click, build event. And now all you gotta say is disable close button me. And then do you wanna disable it or, 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 um, or enable it? This one is the on button. So we'll say false. We're enabling it. And then this one will be the opposite. That'll be true. Okay. And you can use this for, you know, ver uh, validation rules or any of that kind of stuff. Whatever you want to do, right? On, off. And it doesn't have to close the form. There's no flickering. See? It's just the Windows API call that controls all of that. Let me see if Control F4 still works. Yeah, Control F4 does still work. So you would have to intercept that as well. And you'd use the key down event for that. I got a video for that too. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share this with you guys because I spent a few hours trying to figure it out for my own database. So I figured I'd share some of the headache that I had. Yeah, even I, even I have to take a while to figure some of this stuff out from time to time. I'm not, you know, I don't know everything about access myself. So when I come across some interesting stuff, I like to share it with you guys because you're like family. But I'll put a link to that code down below so you can all go into the code vault and get it. No membership required. But if you do want to become a member, you get tons and tons of extra stuff that's in the code vault too, plus extended cut videos, plus you can download these databases, all kinds of extra perks. But this one's a freebie. And if you want to learn more, if you like my lessons, check out my developer lessons. Got tons and tons of stuff on my website that you can use to further your access skills. But that is going to do it for today, folks. That's your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.